Bom, bom dia. Uh, antes da gente começar, eu queria só uh, pedir uma desculpa para vocês, que a, a nossa conversa aqui no palco vai se acontecer em inglês, por conta de uma questão da tradução para eles não terem que ficar trocando de idioma o tempo inteiro. Então, é legal estar tá com, com o equipamento da tradução para vocês acompanharem uh, sem nenhum problema. Eu vou ser bem breve. I just want to invite Peter uh, Kurt to the stage. And he's going to talk to us about what is happening in the U.S. and Europe in terms of uh, different ways of thinking e-commerce, how they're using technology, and then we're going to discuss how that things could be understood and what we can bring from those ideas to Brazil. Kurt, please, stage yours. Good morning. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Bom dia. Thank you very much for being here this morning. It's a pleasure to see everybody. Before I start uh, into the uh, details about what's going on in the U.S., I'm going to uh, tell you a story about a trip that I took in 1992 that demonstrates how much the Internet has changed our lives. Twenty years ago, my wife worked on an archaeological dig in Ashkelon in Israel. She was gone from home for a month at a time when our children were seven and ten years old. Every few days, we would write her a letter and I would take it to work and fax it to her. And a few times during the month she was gone, we received an airmail letter from her. We planned to make a family trip out of her archaeology adventure, so a few months before she left, I found a travel agent in Chicago who specializes in travel to the Middle East. And through perusing brochures and guidebooks, we settled on an itinerary in Israel and Egypt. After my wife had been at the dig for a month, our girls, and our, join, our girls and I joined her. Our trip did not get off to a good start as we were delayed eight hours in leaving Chicago. We missed the connecting flight in Amsterdam, so ended up being almost a whole day late arriving in Israel. At all stages of that trip, we had to ask the airline to contact DIG headquarters in Ashkelon to inform my wife of the delay. After receiving a number of garbled messages, she finally was able to piece together what had happened, contacted the airline for an update, and was actually able to be at the airport in Tel Aviv when we arrived. Looking back on that experience, what's remarkable about it is the way the internet has changed every step of that process in a very short period of time. Jump ahead 10 years, and in 2002, our 10-year-old who was with us on that trip is a college student studying in Greece a day or two after she arrived in Athens, she found an internet cafe and was able to send us an email and let us know that she had arrived safely. And a few days later, she wowed us by emailing some pictures to us of things that she was doing with her friends there. When we went to visit her, I made all of our travel arrangements online, booking the flight, finding and reserving a hotel, and even engaging a private guide to take us on a day trip to Delphi. Jump ahead another seven years, and in 2009, our daughter is now a newlywed, living in Australia, and her sister, the seven-year-old on our first trip, is a 24-year-old working on a sailboat in the Pacific Ocean. We talk to our older daughter every week via Skype from Australia and stay in constant touch with her through email, an unimaginable convenience when we would have wanted to communicate with my wife in Ashkelon in 1992. And her younger sister sends us emails from places like Nukuhiva and Kiribati, places that we never had even heard of before and had to look up on Google Earth to know where they were. Yet those remote islands in the Pacific Ocean have internet access. And not only that, but the boat she's on sends a daily update via the internet of its coordinates, and we can see exactly where it is in the vast Pacific Ocean every day. In the U.S., more than 75% of all adults have shopped online. That's an amazing penetration of the market. By comparison, at the peak of catalog shopping in the U.S., before the Internet began displacing catalogs, 46% of U.S. adults had shopped a catalog in the course of a year. In only about 15 years, the Internet is displacing the shopping medium that was more than 100 years old. So let me give you a snapshot of recent online retailing in the U.S. In 2008, total online sales in the U.S. reached about $139 billion. 
In 2012, we're projecting that number to be about $222 billion. That's 60% growth in four years. And that included the recession year of 2009, when there was very little growth, and the recovery year of 2010, when the growth uh, was there, but not as robust as it has become since then. In the U.S., the largest dominate the market. Internet retailer publishes um, a guide to the top 500 online retailers in the U.S. and Canada. And in 2011, those top 500 had total sales in the U.S. of $156 billion. So you can see that's uh, over two-thirds of the total market controlled by the top 500. Uh, just for comparison, worldwide sales of those top 500 totaled $180 billion. Consumers buy a broad range of products from U.S. online retailers. Mass merchants such as Amazon.com and Walmart collect about $53 billion a year in sales. Computers and electronics, which have uh, very much transferability to online shopping, account for about $29 billion. That pattern will become even more pronounced when the teenagers of five years ago become the back-to-school shoppers ten years from now. Those stats are just for context. I don't think I have to convince anyone here that online retailing is strong and is going to be happening here uh, in Latin America as well. In fact, e-retailing is already a major factor in Latin America. The number of online retailers here is significant enough that internet retailers are able to track the market. We recently came out with our first ranking of online retailers in Central and South America, the internet retailer Latin 300. Details are at the web page indicated here, but I'll just note that 185 of the top 300 are Brazilian companies and that Brazilian e-commerce sales are expected to more than double in the next six years. In Europe, U.S. retailers are taking market share from European retailers. Uh, the U.S. retailers account for 10% of online sales in Europe and are growing 50% faster than the market as a whole. But here in Latin America, things are different. U.S. retailers account for about 10% of sales here also, but they are growing much more slowly than the market as a whole. That means the opportunities here for homegrown success are very strong. With that in mind, now, I'd like to talk to you about uh, some of the interesting things that U.S. online retailers are doing to attract and retain customers. One of the most interesting innovations and one that experts have expected for years is same-day delivery. One of the big challenges that online retailers face is the instant gratification that customers get when they buy something in a store. Amazon is hoping to overcome that by offering same-day delivery in 10 metropolitan areas, including New York, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. They've been offering same-day delivery for two and a half years and say they are not yet ready to expand, but those 10 cities account for 20% of U.S. consumers, so it's something that all e-retailers would have to be aware of. In fact, just two weeks ago, eBay began testing a same-day delivery program in San Francisco using a mobile app called eBay Now. Customers who order from several large chains with stores in San Francisco can choose same-day delivery for only $5. Another Amazon innovation is charging a single fee for shipping all orders in a year. Amazon has a program called Amazon Prime for which customers pay $79 a year and that covers shipping costs for all the customers' purchases in that year. Amazon has been pitching it to con consumers as free shipping, but when you pay nearly $80 a year for something, it's hardly free, yet consumers have responded. Here's some interesting data. Nearly 19% of Amazon customers are Prime members, and they account for 32% of sales, and they buy, buy twice as often at Amazon as other customers. For Amazon Prime customers, Amazon has become the default shopping destination. For them, shopping trips start at Amazon.com, and because Amazon offers so much stuff, shoppers usually don't go anywhere else. It's a hard challenge for other retailers to overcome. Some have experimented with similar ideas, but no one has the critical mass that Amazon has. So if you're trying to establish yourself as a major shopping destination, you should keep a program like Amazon Prime uh, in your sights. 
Mobile commerce has become big in the U.S. And, and is already big in many other areas around the world. It's super convenient for consumers, and it's a great option in areas where the internet infrastructure isn't so well developed. As you can see, 30% of U.S. customers have no mobile device, such as a smartphone, an iPad, or a compact laptop. But surprisingly, more than a third of consumers in the U.S. have three or more devices. That's an astonishing number until you look a little more deeply. Let me ask this, uh, raise your hand. How many people here in this room have three or more mobile devices? A cell phone, an iPad, another tablet, a Kindle, a Nook, a compact computer? If you uh, look around the room, you'll see quite a few hands up, and I think that is the future um, of retailing. Everyone knows what's happening with the iPhone and the iPad. Hundreds of millions sold in a very short period of time. What I want to call out are some facts beyond sheer numbers that foretell the future of mobile commerce and marketing. A survey of U.S. mobile phone customers shows that 40% of consumers who switched carriers did so to get better data plans. More data means one thing. Consumers are not using their phones to talk. They're most likely using them to browse the internet and especially to shop. Another interesting fact, at Rue La La, which is a daily deal site for young people's trendy fashion, mobile accounted for more than 50% of sales in a recent day. To me, that's the future of commerce. It may not happen tomorrow, but just like online shopping, as today's young mobile consumers move into their prime buying years, the mobile proportion will grow significantly. We could probably spend all day talking about interesting things that retailers are doing with mobile, but I'll highlight only a few things. Buy.com is a major mass market retailer, online retailer in the US. It believes that smartphone shopping will become a key part of its future. And Buy.com is not just waiting for the market to develop, it is taking steps to make its smartphone app more usable and able to do things that websites can't do. Its big move in that area is to make mobile product search faster and more accurate with features that are unique to mobile. As almost everyone who has used a keyboard on a smartphone knows, you cannot avoid making mistakes in typing. And with the iPhone at least, auto-correct is often auto-error. Buy.com's mobile site search function includes speech recognition, where the customer speaks the product they're looking for, barcode scanning, and even image search. With image search, a customer uses the camera on the phone to take a picture of a product, and the search program finds similar products and buys inventory. It's an amazing leap forward in mobile shopping. Upgrading that app was important as the app already accounts for 5% of buy sales. Also on the mobile front, some retailers have launched augmented reality programs. With augmented reality, a consumer inserts an image of a product into an environment viewed on a smart screen, smartphone screen. So as you can see, here's the blank wall um, outside my office. Um, at overstock.com, a shopper might find a picture that she likes. She'll launch the app, then aim her camera phone at the wall she wants to hang the art on, then insert the art into that space. She can tell how it will look with her decor and furniture. Augmented reality is an unfortunate name because it doesn't have much marketing pizzazz, but the concept itself is very exciting and should have a quick adoption rate for retailers whose products are suited to that environment. That's the kind of thing that you can do with mobile that you can hardly do with any other uh, retailing application. Another interesting mobile application is at wine, at wine retailer, wine.com. Wine.com has created an app that replicates the idea of shopping in a store, only more convenient. With Wine.com's iPad app, consumers flip through labels on their screen instead of browsing through a list or looking at static images of bottles of wine. That's a very important development and demonstrates that the marketers in Wine.com understand how wine buyers uh, behave. Think of how you buy a bottle of wine. Whether you're a connoisseur or a casual wine buyer, what do you do? You pick up the bottle and look at the label. Whichever kind of buyer you are, the label tells you something about the wine. 
and that's what Wine.com is replicating with its iPad app. All retailers can do the same thing as Wine. Wine.com has done by understanding how their customers shop. Some retailers are using their sites to position their companies as more than just sellers of goods, and they're doing that as a way to connect on an emotional level with consumers. With the nearly unlimited space on websites, it's easier for retailers to get their message to consumers than it ever was before. Starbucks, for instance, uses its site to communicate its environmental initiatives. In this case, efforts to reduce cup use and promote reusable cups. Another retailer taking a similar approach is Patagonia, a seller of outdoor gear. It highlights its commitment to environmental issues and to sustainable manufacturing practices by using its website to show a map of and give information about each factory it uses to make its products. It has video stories about those factories' commitments to treating their workers fairly. In addition, Patagonia has posted a video that articulates that Patagonia wants customers to make environmental and social considerations a conscious part of their buying choices. And under the Reduce, Reuse, and Recycle theme, Patagonia has a place on its site where customers can sell their own used Patagonia gear rather than throwing it away. In the past, a company that wanted to communicate such information to consumers would have adopted expensive advertising and public relations campaigns. Today, they may still use, a P use PR, but because they can use their websites as a cornerstone for their PR campaigns, marketers have much more control than ever before over the message and much greater potential to reach their targeted market. One of the biggest changes that we've seen in online retailing recently is the adoption of social media for marketing. Facebook, Twitter, review sites like TripAdvisor or Yelp all have become important media in connecting with and influencing buyers. Many retailers are struggling to understand how to use social media to their advantage. <coughs> Users of Facebook, for instance, have for the most part resisted buying anything directly on Facebook. And in fact, if you've been following Facebook's public stock offering in the U.S., you know that Facebook itself is having a hard time understanding how it's going to make any money. But Facebook has proven to be a good marketing venue. Express, you can see their Facebook page here, is a chain of clothing stores for young people in the United States. It gained 2.4 million Facebook fans simply by changing its featured, featured fashions on Facebook every week and keeping customers informed of the latest fashion trends. As you can see when I took this screen grab last week, more than 78,000 people were talking about Express at the moment I was taking the screen grab, and more than 30,000 were actually on that page. With that many fans on Facebook, it's a safe bet that Express has generated sales from its Facebook presence, but the amount is hard to quantify. If nothing else, Express has learned what combinations and outfits shoppers respond to. They learn that by the number of likes they get on fashion ensembles, and that has helped their merchandising. One way to look at the effectiveness of social is by the raw numbers of shoppers who come to your site from a social site. Toy retailer Totsy.com reports that nearly 35% of the new users come from social initiatives every month. Anyone here who is not busy inventing the future is going to be left behind. So I thank you very much for your presence today. Um, as part of this conference, I'm going to offer you a free digital sample of our magazine, um, Internet Retailer. You can go to the URL on the slide here. Um, if you can't see it from where you are, it's um, bit.ly slash n-g-u-k-i-m. That's a shortened version of our URL where you can download a sample copy of the magazine without having to subscribe to it. Usually that's just open to subscribers. If you like the, what you see, you can go to internetretailer.com and sign up for a free digital subscription to the magazine and it will, uh, you'll get a, uh, an email notice of the availability of that magazine um, every month and I hope you'll find it helpful as you uh, continue in your own journey to invent the future of retailing. So thank you very much, uh, Muito Obrigado, and I'm happy to turn things now back over to Manuel.
Well, uh, thank you very much, Kurt, for the very interesting presentation. And now we're going to start our little chat here and with Flavio Dias, which is the vice president of e-commerce for Walmart Brazil, which is kind of a much more peculiar operation than Walmart International. So my first question to you is, what exactly is the role of uh, technology on your operation today and for e-commerce? And after that, how do you see the ideas that Kurt present to us applied to our reality in Brazil? Okay, uh, good morning everyone, and thanks for being uh, here. Thanks for inviting me to be here. Um, just to uh, give you an example of how important it is for us, since the moment that uh, Walmart uh, decided to win in the space of, um, of the e-commerce, and it took place a couple of years ago, uh, we have acquired five different companies around the world, four in the US and another one in China. Um, out of these five, four of them are pure technology company. So we know that uh, in order to win in this market, we have to win in technology, right? So in technology, there are a whole different ways of looking to technology, but the way I like to look at it is that it plays a key role in each of the uh, most important stages of the uh, customer experience purchase. So it, uh, it plays an important role while attracting the customers to your website give you an example. So the way you use technology to boost your intelligence in search marketing with Google, for instance. How can you, in an effective way, manage millions or sometimes dozens of millions of words in a way that you are able to bring uh, a qualitative uh, audience to your website, people that will be most likely convert and, uh, and buy with you. So um, technology can play and is playing a, a key role on that one. Since we've got people on our website, then technology again plays a very important role in uh, making a better, better experience for those customers so they can um, get to the product they want and they can buy it. So internal search, again, when you have sometimes hundreds of thousands or sometimes millions of products on our website, how easy can you uh, bring the right product in front of your customer? So of course, again, technology is a key, uh, has a key role in, in understanding that and presenting the correct, uh, the correct uh, product for the customer. And of course, in the third phase, which is once you have uh, already sold to that customer and you want to build a relationship with him and want to make him buy again and again with you, then again, technology uh, has, is the right way for you to process this huge amount of data that you, that you have from those, from those customers, what they, what they buy, what are they, what are they uh, navigating, um, and, uh, and where, where, in which social network are they um, posting, uh, which are their friends, so based on, on all of those informations, then you were able to um, market to them in a most relevant way. So I think, um, I, and, it, and I could be talking uh, about hours, uh, you know, for hours about it. Uh, so it's, it's really important. And uh, to, the, to the second part of your question, um, Kurt talked about a lot of different and interesting things. Um, but, uh, and, and of course, all of, the, all of those things um, in different stages are already happening in Brazil as well. So, uh, and, 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 and in Walmart universe, um, especially in, in other countries, it's already uh, very strong. So you talked about um, uh, social, right? The importance of social. You know that, I'm um, not sure if, if, you, if you know that, Kurt, but in Brazil, we are very social active. One, one of the most uh, active countries in terms of social, uh, since the very beginning, uh, it, it's the, because the Brazilians are like that, they like to speak, they like to, to build relationships, and so we, we use that a lot. So since the very beginning of our, um, we launched our website, walmart.com.br, uh, four years ago, and uh, since the very beginning, we've been using the, uh, the social environment to, to get insights from customers, to market our products, 
to also better serve them uh, as well when they have some problems with us. Um, but, it, but it's been a, a learning curve and we've done some very interesting things um, and, actually we, and actually also related to, uh, to sales, right? Not only to relations but also related to, to sales. Um, mobile as well is one of the things that you've mentioned and um, I think we are just scratching the surface with that but uh, we already are providing a very uh, interesting experience for our customers in a, in a, in a mobile world. Uh, but I have to, I, I like to use the example of the U.S., where the mobile technology is not only uh, being used by a, 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 an interesting uh, vehicle to uh, boost online sales, but most importantly, it's it's serving as a glue to um, um, to uh, to improve the whole experience of the customers, whether he is in the in the website or in the store. So, uh, and, 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 and we have 200 million visits per week in our stores all over the world. So imagine, you know, how can, how can we, how would, would be great if we can influence these 200 million people by offering them a unique experience while they are in our fiscal stores with their mobile, if we can recognize them, if we can offer them products related to their past experience, if they had their shopping list with them, if they can locate the products within the, the store, if they can pay by the end of the, the, the shopping experience, if they can pay with their mobile. And I mean, there's so many, so many things that we are already testing and, and doing with success using mobile technology. And of course, you also mentioned uh, the, uh, the importance of the delivery, and you mentioned same day delivery for Amazon. Of course, uh, we, um, as a customer, uh, we'd, we'd love to get the, the stuff that we are buying online the very same day. I think um, right now it's, it can be possible already in Brazil for certain areas, for certain products, but uh, as we were talking before uh, coming up here, uh, logistics is, is, a breed, is a big challenge for, for us. We are, um, and, and we are seeing a lot of companies investing to make it better. But, um, but still, it's something that we Brazilians have to work a lot and we have to, you know, uh, get support from, from the government, from the, uh, from, from, from the local companies as well, from, from the uh, companies that, that are willing to invest in this market because uh, it can be a, a bottleneck for, for the, this growth that we are experiencing here. Yeah, one of the challenges that I think, um, one of the ways that retailers can address that challenge and it might work for a Walmart, maybe now for smaller retailers, is to build lots of distribution centers. Uh, in the U.S., Amazon uh, has, I think, 18 uh, or more, maybe 20, two dozen or so distribution centers already um, and is planning to build more. And I think, as we were talking about before uh, we came on with the uh, delivery challenges here, you might need a lot of small distribution centers to make same-day delivery a reality in the big cities. You're absolutely right, Kurt. And the way that the, the major e-commerce players have de developed in Brazil, they, all of them, they, they base their DC in Sao Paulo or Rio or some, some state in the southeast region where 60 to 70 percent of these sales are concentrated. But uh, now we are seeing this, this picture change and we are seeing and we are hearing about uh, some of these companies, and Walmart is one of them, invest in hundreds of millions of dollars in creating this uh, network that will be taking our presence close to the customers um, in the regional areas as well. That's, that's re really interesting. I think that uh, e-commerce is probably the most uh, connected to the physical world activity we have on the internet today because you have to deliver goods. Uh, and of course, that's an extra challenge for what we're doing. So our time is kind of out. So my last question is for both of you, what do you believe is going to be the key challenge for local players to improve uh, their operations in Brazil, despite the fact that we're starting to see some slowing on the economy and things like that? So how do you believe that people can position themselves using technology and different techniques to, surp to surpass those problems? I would say the first thing that retailers need to do is take a look at uh, your website and how you present the merchandise to the customers. That's fundamental to success in online retailing and often very different from what you would expect in a store. Uh, even if you have a store background, 
um, presenting merchandise online in a way that customers will react to that merchandise and make a purchase is a big challenge. So I'd say, first of all, look at the fundamentals of your website uh, design and usability. You'll hear a little bit later today uh, from Tim Ash who will talk about some of those uh, important issues, uh, but I can't stress how important it is to engage the customer as soon as that customer gets to the website and get them down an easy path um, to purchase. And then I would say maybe uh, at the same time as that, you should be developing uh, your, a strong marketing program, learning how to use uh, Google and how to use email marketing and text message marketing as a way to bring consumers to your website and get them to make those purchases. Um, I, I agree with that, but in addition, I would say um, I think we, we still got a, a long way to do in terms of the offering that we have online. So when we compare a site like Amazon, they, they, are, they carry around 50 million different SKUs and they offer that to their customers. And, um, you know, and if you take the, the biggest or the largest e-commerce player in the, in, in the country right now, it's a, just a few hundred thousand, right? Um, so I think this is being able to increase that offering online is one very, uh, very important thing. And we cannot, again, um, I, we have to mention that technology and logistics will be key for that as well. So uh, until we have, to, until we, we, we are operating in, in, a, in an environment where we can again build trust with the customer that they, they will buy with us and they will get the, the good in the promised time, uh, I think that that's also a very important challenge and, um, and how can we be more and more relevant to them. Uh, and that's, like I was telling before, the, uh, where technology can play an important role. But building this trust is it's key right now when this, when this, um, this in, with this environment, the customer has to trust us. And the last surveys, if you, if you take a look at it, you see that uh, this confidence is, uh, is not in a good position right now. And, and do you believe that technology is going to have an important role in building the trust and the relationship with customers? I think we'll it will, but in this case, I think it's more on the logistics side. It's more in fulfilling the promise, right? And we had some recent examples where, where that was not happening, and, uh, and I think um, that was not good for, for neither of us. So uh, I think now th this, uh, this awareness is there, and I, I, f I think that the companies are investing, e-commerce companies are investing on, on building that and, and, and making more realistic uh, promises to the customers as well as the uh, logistics companies as you know as Total Express that belongs to, to, to Webrio now um, and, and other good examples are also investing to um, make, make this promise um, you know fulfilled and I think that will be key for, for the development. Well, our time is out, so thank you, Kurt, very much for your presentation and bring us all the insights that you have uh, on your experience. Thank you, Flavio, for talking about us on the challenge, and please cheers for those guys. Obrigado, gente. Thank you.